and welcome to the Best Recipes. Today is April 29th. This is episode 107. Hi, how are you? Um, my name is Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat Squirrel SQRRL on Instagram. Hi, how are you? You can find this show on the blog, which is thefatsquirrel.com. You can also find it on Blip which is blip.tv. You can also find it on YouTube, which is YouTube. You can also find it on iTunes, oh my gosh, it's iTunes, and all the things that iTunes feeds. I think those are all the places you can find it. Thank you for iTunes reviews. I don't always read them because I don't actually watch via iTunes. I watch via pod... I watch via downcast. Um... Oh, but so I actually did read them, and they're very lovely. Thank you very much. Yay. Um, what else do I need to talk about? I think that's all. Um, there are... Are there any shenanigans this week? I feel like they're... I feel there are mild and uninteresting shenanigans. There's been lots more frizzy playing. We went to the zoo, as we are wont to do. Because uh, the zoo, the Indianapolis Zoo, is like seven minutes from our house and we have a pass so it's relatively free. So yay zoo. The orangutans. They're not here yet. They're here. They're here. But we don't get to see them yet. But their like area of insanity is almost done. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little bit weirded out by it. It's a little bit like it's like explain it but I look at it and I'm like this is like post-apocalyptic animal zoo and that sounds really weird <laughs> and I'm sure it's because they're doing something really cool but like there's like all this structure but no like even faux nature happening yet maybe it's just because they're still in, in construction phase but we're getting really close and it's a little bit alarming looking I mean it looks awesome but it also looks like wait that looks like an awesome building but then there are like animals that are like, how does that work? I'm not sure. I'm just gonna wait and see what happens, okay? Okay. I'm probably gonna touch my hair a lot. Sorry, I do that. I look super white, because I am. But also, yeah, I just am. <laughs> Usually I try to put color on my lips to pretend that I'm not all one color, like I'm not a monochromatic human. However, I may have put the wrong kind on because you can't really tell. I don't actually wear makeup, people. I don't know how it works. I'm okay with that. Don't, don't even give me tips. <laughs> anyway. Oh, but I guess shenanigans of the future. Shenanigans of the future! That sounds way... Oh, oh, Annie saw a bird. That sounds way more dramatic than it really is. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I just want to let you know that TNNA, that's the needle, now I said that and now I don't know what TNNA means. It's the needlework convention, like the needlework, I don't know, the National Needlework Association, is that what it is? Whatever. Their meeting is, the, the uh, their convention for the summer is in Indy this year, which is where I currently live. Um, so if you are going to be at TNNA, we do have, I know it's late, right? I forgot to mention it last time, I'm sorry. But if you're going to be there and you get this before then, go look on the board because we're going to have a few of us get together, maybe have dinner or something, I don't know. Also, so that that's on the board, that's a thread that's happening now. Um, also, I'm throwing pencils. Also, I will be at the Kentucky Sheep and Wool, which is, ah. I believe, Annie which I believe is May 17th or 18th or something like that. I believe it's the 17th. Um, and that is in outside of Lexington, Kentucky. So if you'll be there, we should totally set up like a lunchtime. Hey, howdy, how are ya? Um, so I need to, if I don't remember to put a thread on the board, because I probably won't, feel free to do so if you're going to be there. Um, I've never been there, and they don't have like a map of the... There's no map of the grounds map of people. But there's no map of the grounds posted online, or at least there's not one that I can find. Um, 
so if you have been there and you know like where is a central location that is clearly apparent to all humans, we should totally do that. I think the best time for me to meet up would be noon on Saturday. Does that work for you? You're not going, are you? And you're just like, shush, go on. I know, hush, it's okay. Okay, so that's all that. This week's episode will have, oops. <laughs> it's gonna have a close up of my face in about three seconds because I forgot my spinning over there. It'll have finished spinning. It will have knitting. No, finished knitting. What? It's true. Um, there's a reason I'll talk about it, maybe, if I remember. Uh, but there will be knitting works in progress and then there will be sh questions from the board. Then there may be a random product review, but there will definitely be shameless self-promotion. Let's get into it. <laughs> That's not part of the show if you're new. That's just me stretching. Oh my gosh, are you looking at my curtains or are you enjoying them so much? I know it's very exciting for you to look at my curtains. Hi, hi. I probably won't let that out. Let's not even pretend that I'm that good of a person. Because I'm not. All right. So... Last two weeks ago, I think, I showed you that I was spinning some South, no, Suffolk, no, South Down, South Down, that I purchased from Hilltop Cloud, and I forgot her name last time, I'm sorry, I knew it was something with a cloud. She's Hilltop Cloud, she has an Etsy shop, and of course she is from the UK, as you can see there, but her shipping was very reasonable for UK, and her prices were reasonable as well. So this is my South Town. So my intention was to spin this for socks, but yeah, I can never get fingering weight, but yeah, whatever. They'll either be chunky socks or they'll be, it'll be something else. So this is a traditional three ply. I got something over 350 yards. I kind of lost count. <laughs> it's like a sport, I would say. Um, it was very enjoyable. I was kind of nervous to try to spin something fine from this was still top, but just because it was south down, it was not really, like, it was not a very smooth top. Do you know what I mean? It was like that still very more, more like roving and that it was very airy. And I was a little bit concerned about how to spin fine with that or fine for me. Because I, if, you, if you're new, I can't spin fine. Okay. It's okay. Um, but I can't do anything small in life. But I was a little bit concerned about that. I have some no, no makers. It's not no makers. <laughs> what is this name? Gnome Spun. I have some Gnome Spun Tunis roving that I got at New York Sheep and Wool. Oh my God, you should go to Maryland Sheep and Wool. I'm so jealous. <gasps> have a good time. That I got from him and I'm a little bit, I was kind of afraid to spin it because now that is actually dyed roving, not top. Where the fibers are all instead of, if you don't know the difference. So that, but I've been looking at it like, I'm afraid to spin that. Cause it has that like very eerie structure. And I was like, is that gonna work? But this was similar and it was very easy to spin fine. In fact, yeah, I mean, it floofed up quite a bit because of a self down, but I could have spun it finer, I think without any kind of issue. I really like it. So it's a three ply, yay that. And then I had a little bit of singles left over. Okay, I had some singles left over. I shouldn't say a little bit. So I just two-plied them, and I, I love the two-ply. I don't know why, but I really love the little two-ply and how it came out. So I need to do more fine weight two-plies occasionally, once in a while. Maybe never again. I'm just saying things to make sounds. But so, I don't know, I really dig it. It would be, it would be a really fun shawl yarn. Or again, or, and also I think, no, this is, this is plied pretty tightly. I tend to tie very, did I even say that right the first time? I tend to ply very tightly. I just like the way the roundness looks. But really, if you're trying to do like a lace or something that's very open or airy, it sometimes it's beneficial to ply more loosely. Uh, it just helps the lace to open up and gives you a less ropey looking finished project. Product. Um, so this is spot, this is plied a little bit less tightly than I normally do, just because I think it was, it was pretty fine. Um, so it requires more revolutions to make it 
to ply it tightly. I'm just talking to myself at this point, sorry. Um, but so yeah, I need to do more of this though because I, I really like how this turned out. I might have to... I'm gonna try some more very finely done, well, finely for me spun, um, airier wools. Like less, not necessarily commercially dyed prep top, whatever. Really people, it's, there's no excuse for me. It's 4.15 and I need to get this done before my daughter gets home. <laughs> But I shouldn't be podcasting, apparently. I haven't drank enough today yet. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so then... I like it. Well, it's gonna be, be very pretty socks, right? Or be a very cute little hat. Or lovely mittens. I don't know. Oh, what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my Via Jeanche. Via Jante. I really like to say it. Via Jante. I don't care. It's fine. Roll with the people. It's fine. Um, but I want to show you. Look. Oh. I got this cute little... I actually originally purchased. I'm going out of order. Whatever. I just thought of it and I need to say it. Uh, and this is Beaver Slide Dry Goods 2 ply Sock. Which is like a light sport weight. Um, and the Via Jante is actually lace weight. And I will be making one of those. Because I may have just ordered yarn from the Wool and Rabbit. <laughs> You're so pretty. But originally I got this little doohickey, and I really should... Can I do it with this? The, the reason I got it is last year, is that right? Last year I made a Miranda, and I love the Miranda, but I, there's things that I need to work on. I need to... I made the sleeves too long. If you've never seen the construction of it, it's constructed like a T, like it's knit from the back waist, cast on, Cast on for arms, knit, cast off for arms, cast off for neck, knit the front panels. It's made like that. And so it was harder for me to tell how long the sleeves were going to be. Well, the sleeves are too long. And so I need to go back and actually shorten the sleeves. But the other thing I would like help with is it's, it's, it's wide enough to meet in the middle. Do you see how I'm trying to think about how I should tie this in with the other thing that I'm going to talk about today? Which has been my crazy yarn or sweater shopping. It's wide enough to meet in the middle. So I would like to have something. Like I've tried to use the um, like the, the sweater clasp, like the sweater guards that were popular in the 50s. I've tried to use those and I've not had so much success because they always want to pop open. Because I'm a beast. And evidently my boobs are beasts too. So I was looking for something that would be kind of like a shawl pin, but maybe not as like shawl penny. And so <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. So I was looking for, now I can't figure out how to do it. She's so clever the way she did. I did practice. So what this does though, is it hooks through one side and then so your fabric is up here. So yeah, I'll turn it this way. This is, no, okay. So say, say you put it in like this. Like this and then you can hoop your other side through here and it's like a little hook that keeps them together so this works well for that I just need to do the sleeves and then when I actually am wearing that silly sweater I will show you and perhaps it will be slightly more informative than this completely uninformative rant I've just given you if you're new this is how it always is I'm not gonna lie to you no false, no false advertising but so this is from Leslie Wind Clasps and Closures. She also does these lovely, um, she does the um, cable ring, the ring that is a cable needle, which is she donated to Paula's podcast, to Paula's retreat. So I wanted to look and see what else she has. And she has very lovely, like, interestingly designed things. And I mean interesting, like, as an in actually interesting, not like, hmm, that's interesting. I mean, it's interesting. So I'm excited about this little doohickey. And then she sent this one, which is like a paper clip design. Yay, that. And the Viajante does seem to, like, it, it does like to be fastened a bit. We're not feeling super fancy. Which I'm not right now. I'm not feeling super fancy. Just my normal amount of fancy. Which is negative fancy for some people. <laughs> we all have our different fancy scale. 
by the way, I like the word fancy. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so that was out of order, but whatever, shush. Um, knitting works in progress. So I showed you last time that I'm working on these little socks from Coloring Book Yarns. And this is her Lumpy Princess, Lumpy Space Princess colorway, which is an Adventure Time character. And the only reason I'm showing them to you now is I haven't done that much more on them. But I had this strange... We need a word for epiphany that was actually perhaps ill-conceived in the moment, but very exciting at the time, nonetheless. That's what we need. Like an epiphany that was very, woo! And then you did it, and then you were like, hmm, we need a word for that. Is there a word for that? Anyway, so I was, I had this moment when I was knitting at the zoo, because the, they have like a little splash park thing. My kiddo was running around. And I had this moment of like, I need to knit more short socks because I was wearing my summer uniform of yoga capri pants and black tank top and something other to cover me up a little bit. And so I need like I need more socks that I can wear with my sneakers. That, so it's not like, hey, there's like eight inches of weird sock down there and it almost meets your capri pants because you have very short stubby legs, even though you're 5'8". Mm, that's confusing looking for us. I need some shorter socks. So since then, I've made decided that I shouldn't use the very expensive, fancy self-striping socks for shorty socks, but whatever. I'm still excited about my shorty socks. So I'm making very short little socks. So I started on the afterthought heel. I just wanted to make sure, I, this is the first one. Normally I do both socks and then do the heels on both of them, but I wanted to make sure this even worked at all. And I think it does. Although I haven't product tested it with it actually on my foot for any long period of time to see if it slides into my shoes. So I've been, I'm, I may have, I may have bought some more opal yarn to make more shorty socks. I know, right? I can't use my very fancy yarn for shorty socks, except for that time. I can't do it. I make no sense, people. No, I don't. So I'll just use that as a moment to tell you about my craziness this week. Have you, do you have the cast on Aetis? Are you going crazy? Is it because it's spring and it's finally actually spring and not just pretend really it's still winter spring? involved in the Gastonitis. I went to make all of the summer cardigans. All of them. Like that. <laughs> it totally sounded like I just burped that sentence. I didn't. I went to make all of the summer cardigans. Because as I put on, see this is, it's all coming, you know, this is why. It all comes together, right? So I was putting on my, my summer unit. I have several summer cardigans, which are very lovely and quite nice. And they all work very well with dresses. But I knit them all before I realized about the butt dart. So all of them are very short because before I realized about the butt dart, my my shape from the from the side, like if this is my front and this is my back, my shape is this. I have a very sticky outy butt. It's not quite a shelf butt. You can't really put a drink on it. But a jello shot would probably stick there. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Not that I would know, because I really don't. That just sounds like I do. I didn't know. I don't know that. I, it's not tested. Anyway, going on. <laughs> so to get a sweater that looked flattering on me, I feel like I had to make it shorter than my faux butt shelf. So, faux butt shelf. That sounds like it could be another language. Anyway, um, so I was, so all my cardigans are very short. Well, then when I wear my like black ensemble of blackness, black tank top, black capri pant, and a short cardigan, and they're always bright colors like orange or green or, is that really all I have? Maybe, I feel like I have one more. Anyway, it's just the colors, too much contrast, and then like the, the it's like color, but it's not like at the right level. I don't, the dresses have a, a usually like a, they go in under the bust, so the line of the short sweater makes more sense there, but when you're, when you have the long line of the all black underneath and then you have a short sweater on it, it looks very much more contrasty. Also, it's a contrasty color. I don't know how things work, basically. So all week I've been going crazy. Looking for sweater patterns that, um, well, it's really not been crazy, but I mean, I may have been spending way too much time on Ravo looking at patterns and yarns. Maybe. So I've decided 
that I need to know a wispy. I'm a little bit nervous. But I'm going to need a wispy because I want a sweater that has a sleeve because that's a big thing because sometimes I'm pretty sassy but every once in a while I'm like okay that's a lot of my arm. Nobody needs to see all of that. So sometimes I need to just, sometimes it's hot and I'm like, Psh. but sometimes I need to cover it up a, just a little bit. Just, I feel more comfortable. So, what am I trying to say here? Oh, but I don't want like a whole cardigan that's like gonna have to like close or then not close. Do you know what I mean? So then you're like constantly like, does this close? Should I not close it? And to me, okay, this might be TMI. This is TMI. Are you ready for some TMI? If you don't want TMI, this is your warning. I will do jazz hands when TMI is over. Leave. I'm not kidding. I'm warning you. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like, in my head, that I just thought of right now, it's kind of like the thong underpant versus the full coverage underpant. Now, some people are anti-thong underpant because that bit of fabric is betwixt your butt cheeks. There's no other way to say it. Okay, however, if your underpants have a tendency to not stay where they are supposed to stay, like nestling all the way around the, the roundness of your butt, they don't want to stay right there. And in fact, they want to migrate in betwixt your butt cheeks, where the thong would be. That's a lot more fabric that goes up in between your butt cheeks, especially if you have a butt that's this wide, like mine. That's a lot of fabric. If your bottom is this wide, this much fabric might not be irritating. But if you have a bottom that's this wide, it's a lot of it's a lot of fabric in a very small area. So to me, the sweater is similar to the summer sweater. Because like, there's a lot more fabric that has to go around to meet in the middle of me. There's like this much on a side. So the tendency that I, the, what I want to have is a sweater that just like is open in the front. But if I knit a sweater and then just leave it open, because somebody's gonna be like, why don't you just knit a sweater and leave it open? And then you have the option to close it. Because then I have this much fabric wedged between my arm and my boob, and it's awkward. Much like all those panties. Okay, jazz hands. Some people are now regretting that they didn't listen to my TMI warning. <laughs> I told you. Anyway. So I wanted a sweater that did not have front panels to get in the, because I just really want something for sleeves and just, but I don't want to, I don't want like a bolero, no. Well, yes, a bolero or a shrug. Like I don't just want a big band across the width of my back because I don't need any help looking any wider. I got that down. I'm good. Which is what the that tends to do. So the wispy, much like that other one that everybody's knitting right now, the hit, hit of food, the lacy one. Um, it's like a shrug with a skirt. And I don't mean like a full skirt, but you know what I mean? It's like a shrug with some extra business on the back so you don't have that line across the widest part of your back. I love talking. So why, you're like, why? Because I was really in the, instantly like drawn to all these hit of foods or whatever they are. Megan of the Stocking Zombies Zombies made one. Uh, Diane of Knittables is making one or has made one. And a lot of people, Jenna, Java Jenny made one. And a lot of people that are going to Stockton and Zombies and are making them the retreat. Um, but I don't like that much lace on my arms because it's like a lot of texture on my super awesome corn fed surviving the apocalypse arms. That's a lot of texture on them and it really draws attention. Like this. So I didn't want all that lace on me. So that's why I'm gonna the wispy. Why couldn't I just wait to tell you this when I'm actually knitting the wispy? Because it's up here in my brain. I can't not talk about it because it's up here. And we were just talking about other things that all tied together and I, it just happened. Don't judge. So until my yarn gets here, because of course I had to buy yarn. <laughs> Let's 
not be silly. I had to look at yarn obsessively to find the exact right neutral tone that I wanted because that's the other thing. I totally want a neutral. I never knit with neutrals, but I wanted a neutral. Well, I do knit with neutrals, but you know what I mean. I don't have a tendency to knit with neutrals. It's a lot of a lot. That's why I haven't gotten a lot done this week. Also, I was cross-stitching something. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, there will be no product, random product review today. <laughs> so I'm knitting the Irish Coffee, which is by Baby Cocktails. You don't need to see that. I am knitting it with Quince and Company. Lark. In the Marsh colorway. And I have made good progress because I'm trying to get at least almost done-ish before all my new yarn comes in. And I have to cast on So here it is. It looks very tiny. Don't worry, it fits. I tried it on. Um, it looks very tiny. Oh, next week I need to totally talk about why I like these Chow Goo interchangeables ever so much. Let's talk about the next week. I don't have a pen. Um, I need to talk about that next week. Next week. But so here it is. Yay! The only thing I am doing differently is I'm, well, the things I am doing differently, I'm doing my standard rate of increase for the front you don't need to know that. But you can change the rate of increase on a raglan. It doesn't hurt anything. The other difference that you may see if you've seen other people knit this is I made three cable patterns in the middle because she, that lady didn't... Baby cocktails is like a baby cocktail and I'm like a stout. She's like this big. And so two little cable things on her makes perfect sense scale wise. But on me, I felt like it would look a little dinky. So I went up to three cable thingies. The only thing I had to do to make that happen was I had to do a little bit of creative increasing here, like along the center one, the center from the V-neck, because it would have been a pearl and I needed it to be knit. So I just did, I just did some increases. It worked out fine. We should do increases anyway. So it just worked out. Okay. Okay. So I did my normal bust increasing which means I from halfway down I increased every other row the rest of halfway down I increase every row and then after I put the arms together I knit about two inches or so and then I start decreasing which I'm trying to oh it's down here Oink. Oink. so you can see it right there it lays crooked when it's not on you but as soon as you put it on it, it lays correctly you can see them they're happening left and right okay right there and then I'll also do butt darts. I've started the butt darts on the back. You can see the, the uh, you can see the stitches are starting to slope. And again, you put it on, the cable pattern still looks straight. It's just because somebody else. There's that. And I don't think I'm gonna make mine quite as long as hers, but I will still make it at least like hip length. I think that's the plan. Okay, so here's the other reason I have nothing. Well, I don't have nothing done. That was actually quite a lot. This is the only other reason I don't have everything done this week. I've been cross stitching. <laughs> uh, my bestie's birthday was a million hundred years ago, and I'm the worst friend ever, so I'm just now getting her present. I couldn't think of it together. So I'm making her this bag and then I'll get her another thing. Don't worry, I'm not that bad. But it says Tina Fey is my spirit animal because she, like all clever people, loves Tina Fey. The only bad thing is I used this stuff that was called Pelon Stick and Stitch or something like that. And I was really excited about it because it's like sticky, essentially graph paper that you put down and then you can use it you just, it's, a, it's tear away. Well, they have tear away, they also had wash away. But I was afraid if I washed the black stitching, it might bleed onto this very light colored bag. So I was kind of afraid to do that because I've never done anything like that before. So I got the tear away kind. It is such a pain to tear away. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I should try to look that up on the internets. But it's a total pain. <laughs> hard to get off of there. That said, it's still totally cute. I'm very pleased with it. <gasps> Isn't it cute? But so that's why there's all that white gunky stuff. But it's like sticky craft paper. You don't have to stitch it down or anything. You just stick it down. 
Oh, one of the things I did do, I won't touch, well, I'll try to remember putting in the show notes who did this pattern. It's like 11.04 or something. But if you like, go on Etsy and just look for Tina Fey, you'll find it. But the only thing I didn't like about her pattern, and maybe I just don't understand something, but it was not centered appropriately. You know, like on cross-stitch patterns, they give you those things to find the center. They were not actually in the middle of anything. It's like on the middle, like the, the pattern was printed on a grid and the larger grid that it was printed on, that was the middle of that larger grid, but the pattern was not actually centered on that grid. It really stressed me out. So what I did is because this stuff is like paper, I actually just cut out a, the square that was big enough and then I just used a pencil and just marked the pattern onto the grid paper. So it's just like fill in the blanks. That made it so much, this is only two colors. You know what I mean? So that made it so much easier. I could just do it while I was watching TV and I didn't have to try to make sure I was counting and all that stuff because that's stressful sometimes. Especially with words and they're also spacey, spacey apart. So that really worked out well and that I liked about it. But this whole getting it off is like, ugh. Torture. But isn't that cute? Okay. I'm looking at the time to see if my child's gonna come home. Okay, questions. Okay, so these questions I think will be relatively quick. Steffi Joe asks, essentially, paraphrasing, what made me want to start podcasting? It's been like two years now. I'm not really sure anymore. <laughs> I think in the very first episode, I probably talk about what made me want to start podcasting, but I cannot look, I can't watch that episode. I can't do it. I don't know what's on there. It's probably scary. I feel vaguely like <laughs> I started a blog and I was awful at it. Like an actual written blog. I am terrible about it because I so over, I just over edit in an extreme way which creates paralysis and it's completely counterproductive to anything ever getting done ever. Hence me not ever editing this epi these episodes. Because <laughs> it would be like, hi, bye. You know, it would be bad. So that was not a good idea. But then I think the reason I actually did the podcast, why I wanted to be doing anything, I guess, was at the time I had a little one who was still home. She was three, that's a lie. She was four, I think, when I started. And I didn't really have any kind of knitting community or like fibery community. And so it just seemed like a way to maybe foster that a little bit. Um, so I think that's really the reason I started. Also, I did a bunch of stuff. And it was like, why not show people the stuff I make? At the time, I wasn't really knitting as much as I do now. So that's been a great thing that happens. <laughs> I'm crazy! <laughs> so that may not be the most coherent answer. Of course it isn't. But to be honest with you, I really no longer remember. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so the next questions are from Crouching Cheese. Crouching Cheese. Hidden Gouda. No, that doesn't work. I don't know. Hidden Bacon. Does that work? Whatever. What breed of dog do I have? My dog is a schnoodle. Annie! Annie is a miniature poodle papa and a miniature schnauzer mama. We needed to get a dog that was a hair breed rather than a fur breed because I'm allergic to fur. And I didn't, I'm not like deathly allergic to it. It's not good for me, but I'm not like deathly allergic to it. But I was afraid that my daughter might, you know, one day be. So this is Annie. Say hi. So she does not shed, and I know one person who is very allergic to animals, and, and they can be around her with no problems. Also, I tend to be, <laughs> my husband tends to be kind of compulsive about pet hair. <laughs> he gets really freaked out about it, about it. So I, hair breed works better. <laughs> so she does not shed. She sheds like maybe in the spring and in the fall a little bit, but she just has to get haircuts. She's like a people, and she's awesome. Okay, so then she also asks about favorite recipes. I, I have none. All good recipes are my favorites. Period. I do really like the buttermilk powder recipe for buttermilk biscuits that's in America's Test Kitchen in the baking books because I rarely actually have buttermilk on hand. And when I first really started to love that pat, that 
recipe, I couldn't afford to have buttermilk on hand regularly. <laughs> buttermilk is like $3, and if you don't really consume buttermilk regularly, do you buy that $3.29 thing of buttermilk to make biscuits with, and that increases the cost of your biscuits quite a bit. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes you have to be thrifty. And you can get that buttermilk powder and it stays in your refrigerator and it does not go bad. It's like powdered milk. It's not creepy. Um, eh, it's a little creepy, but it's no more creepy than powdered milk. How long have I been knitting and spinning? I learned to knit my... the summer after I graduated from high school, so I learned to knit in 1996. And I learned to spin two years ago. So I've been spinning two years ago as of January, so two years and three months. And I've been knitting forever. But I haven't knit that whole time at, by any stretch of the imagination. I probably went through, I knit through college pretty regularly and then I went through a period after college where I could not really afford to knit. I don't know how I afforded to knit while I was in college. I don't, I don't really know how that happened. <laughs> Anyway, but afterwards, I really could not afford it at all. Um, <laughs> and I was, I just wasn't that interested. Um, but then I picked it up. I knit a tiny bit when I was about ready to have my baby, my, when I was about ready to have Tova. But even then, I didn't really. And then, of course, recently, I've been crazy. It was my biggest non-fiber vice. At this moment, it changes. But at this moment, it's board games. My, to my child has kind of reached, my husband does not like to play board games at all. Really cannot be forced. The only thing he'll play with us is like life. I hate that board game, but I'll play it. And we have another one that's like about cats and mice that are chasing each other. But my daughter has recently reached like a, this is, I think it's an only child thing. Like when I was a little girl, I always wanted board games and then had nobody to play with them, play them with. <laughs> so now I'm trying to like slowly and quietly mold my child into a competitive gaming person so that we can play against each other. <laughs> it's really diabolical, quite frankly. But so this, she's recently reached like a strategic thought process hurdle where she's getting much better at strategy versus just like mechanics of board games. Um, and so we got... The reason why I discovered this is we got this little game called Agricola All Creatures Great and Small, or Big and Small, excuse me, it's not the book, it's the game. And basically what it is is a very abbreviated, what do we call that? Not edited. What is it? Oh, I can't think of that word. Oh my gosh, it's going to drive me crazy. Anyway, it's a abbreviated version of the, the original game, which is Agricola. Now you can see this is in a giant box. It weighs a million pounds. It says it's ages 12 years and up. Well, well, I think that's legitimate, but the reason I'm doing that is because this one says it's 13 years and up. This is far easier. <laughs> anyway, it's one to five people, and it's 30 minutes per player. So it's a rather weighty board game. This, however, takes just the um, animal husbandry aspect of Agricola, so it makes it much easier for somebody to wrap their brain around who is not willing to spend that much time on another board game. It's very cute. Now, this one, it is for two players, and it says it's ages 13 and up. My daughter is seven, and she is good at playing board games because we play them a lot, as I mentioned already. She can play it. She can't beat me much to her own consternation. I do play with a handicap. I'm not mean. I play with a six-point handicap. I still totally win. She's got to learn to lose. Until she gets good enough not to. But, so I would not say that every seven-year-old could play this game, but if you have a kid that really is motivated to want to, to play games, A, and then is interested in animals, this is a good one. And it's very cute. Like, you get, you can raise your little sheep. You can raise your little horses, you can raise your little cows, and there's also pigs, which are hiding. It's very cute. And it's enjoyable, like, 
this is a game I could play against another and enjoy myself. Because it has, has deep enough strategy elements that it can be very engaging. Or you can just try to get as many sheep as you can. You know what I mean. So, it's a good game. Alright, shameless pill promotion really quickly. Yes. Okay, so this week there's an update on Friday. The Is it the 4th or the 3rd? I don't know. Hi, husband. I'll be done in just a minute. So, I have a... These are the fabrics. Doo -doo -doo. They are decorator quality, so they are heavy. They are a linen cotton blend. I have both in the larger sweater size. I've recently changed my sweater size. If you ordered one before, they are now two inches wider. They're the same depth, same height, but they're two inches wider now. Like I have my, I have my, um, the first time I used them was at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, this new size. I have my, this is a 10 skein sweater and it's in here comfortably. So, so definitely fine for like a summer weight sweater. So there's like a natural wheat color and then a blue and I ha I'll have them in the sweater and then also the large wedge size. So that will be Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So, I hope you have a lovely week, and I will talk next time.